When new pip install packages, you can use them by using an import statement. One of the reasons for the popularity of Python is that there is a package for pretty much anything. But libraries and frameworks come with their own problems. They tend to sneak into your code and pretty soon your code is using the library everywhere. When errors occur, it gets hard to find the problem. Is it your code or their code? It would be great to separate your code from the library, but how can this be done? In this video, you will see a program that uses an Excel library to read and write Excel files. But for some reason, the library needs to be replaced with another one. Since the library is so coupled with my code, this is not a trivial task and I will create an interface to separate my code from the library. I created a new project with a test Excel file. This is what the Excel file looks like. I want to raise each salary with 10%, put the result in this column and save the Excel file. I'm going to open the file in Python with this library. I pip install it. The library is installed. I load the workbook and worksheet. I iterate the employees and write the updated salary to a new column. I save to a new file and test the code. A new Excel file appears. I open it. And that worked. The salaries are raised. Now this code looks really harmless, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it is not. The script is still small and works. But many responsibilities are mixed here. There is some business logic that multiplies the salary, but that business logic is surrounded by Excel stuff. When this code grows, the mixing of business logic and library code will get very fuzzy. And all this time, I have to make sure that this logic here keeps working. I can already demonstrate this problem with this small program. I'm going to replace the Excel library with this one. I pip install PyLite Excel. I import it. Loading a worksheet works a bit different in this library. Also, the update code changes. And the saving of the file. I delete the target file and test the code. Phew, it works, but you already saw that this was a lot of work. Let me check if the target file is at least correct. Yes, it works, but look at the code. I pretty much had to replace everything that has to do with Excel. And in the middle of it, you can see the business logic. This is messy code. Every change we make to Excel code in our app will also impact business logic. This is because the library code sneaked into our code. I'm going to separate the both and let them communicate with each other through an interface. My goal is to keep everything that has to do with Excel on this side of the diagram. And that means that the interface has to convert Excel structures to Python standard library structures. In this case, that would be a list of rows where each row is a tuple. The cell data types are strings or numbers. I will separate the project in four parts. Salary logic to raise salaries, an interface, Excel code, and main that connects everything together. It is interesting to know that the interface will just be a description of the data. The conversion from Excel to Python data structures happens in the Excel module. 
Let me show you how that works. I start by creating the interface. I can now create an Excel plugin that works with OpenPy Excel. Class OpenPy Excel has a class initializer that takes and stores a file name and sheet name. Now I have to create a load method with the same signature as the interface. Notice the load method takes no input and returns a list of tuples. No Excel information is returned. I do something similar for the save method. I created a new workbook and now save it. I have now fully decoupled all Excel logic from my program. But I am not done yet of course. The next thing I need to create is the salary logic. This module will import and use the Excel interface. The class initializer takes and stores the Excel plugin we are going to use. The salary calculator will only have a single method to raise the salary. It loads the Excel data as a list of tuples. Updates the salary. And saves the data. It is very interesting to see that the type checker is satisfied with this code. Structural subtyping is used and I'll come back to this later. Notice that the business logic is completely separated from Excel details. And at this point we get rewarded for all the work when I hook up everything in main. I get rid of all the code here and import the Excel plugin and the salary calculator. I create the plugin and the calculator. I call raise salaries and execute the code. And that works. Let me open the Excel file. Yep, that worked. Now I know what you are going to say. All this extra code just to replace this code here? And the answer is yes. Separating library code from your code is very important. But why believe me? Let's do a test. Again, I'm going to replace the library. But this time, the changes are confined to a single place. In fact, there will be no significant changes, just an addition of a class. I will add a second Excel plugin to the plugins module. This is the place where it is allowed to import library code. But the second plugin will also implement the Excel interface that promises to receive and return standard library data types. Let me show you. I import PyLite Excel and add a new plugin class. It also takes and stores a file name and sheet name. I load the data using the PyLite Excel library. And create a save method.
The data has been created. I save the file. Notice I only created an extra class. No existing code was changed. This is the open-closed principle at work. So, how do I use the new plugin? Well, I hook everything up in main. I import the plugin. I disable the open Pi Excel plugin and create the Pi Lite Excel plugin. And that is it. I delete the target Excel file and execute the code. And that works. Let me open it. Yep, looking good. You saw how clean it is now to add extra Excel plugins. But also changing the business logic is now much easier. I want to make the raise salary method more flexible and add a percentage parameter. Where do I do this? Well, you don't have to search long. It is, of course, the salary module. And without the Excel code being in the way, I add a percentage parameter and use it like this. I pass it in main and test a final time. I open the Excel file. Yep, that looks like a 15% raise. By the way, why did the type checker understand that both Excel plugins adhered to the Excel interface? This is done with structural subtyping and if you want to learn more about that, click on this video. There you learn the difference between nominal and structural subtyping.